Hello, and welcome to the Game Master's Quick Start Rules for the Attack Wing campaign. Uh, these rules are here, so you don't have to watch the half-hour video, um, and they're just so you can quickly jump into it. Uh, even if you don't want to necessarily play the whole campaign, this is just so you can just hop into a mission and set it up. First things first, uh, Game Masters, they're the people who run the mission. They control all like the enemies and stuff like that, and then the protagonists... Uh, will be the players who travel from mission to mission using the same ship. Alright, for each mission, the protagonists require a ship. Uh, they take it, when they finish a mission, they use it in the next mission. But to create that ship, there is a chart I'm putting on the screen now. Uh, you should be able to see it. Uh, what the players do is they choose a ship. They choose a captain, according to the chart. If the ship was a generic ship, they can pick an admiral as well, and that admiral can be from any faction, and then they have to pick a two-point crew upgrade, and that is how they create their ship. If they ever lose their ship because it gets destroyed, then they have to build a new one. If they succeed in a mission, then they will get a special mission reward, and that will be a new upgrade card. If they lose a mission, they'll get an, they'll still get a new upgrade card, but it might not be the best upgrade card. Now, if a player's ship does not have slots to accommodate the upgrade that they're they're being rewarded with then they may choose an upgrade of a different type and uh, usually the upgrade is going to be point based so the mission might say choose an upgrade of three points what that means is they can select an upgrade of three points or less but they can't choose two upgrades that total three points it has to be an upgrade that is three points or less Running the missions, uh, you just have to watch the mission setup video. It'll explain how to run it. And each mission comes with a briefing video, which is for the players. It tells them the storyline. Uh, if you want to get to know more about the story, then I suggest you also watch the storyline video as well. And uh, originally this was going to be annotations on the screen, but YouTube actually removed annotations. So now at the end of the video you can look in the description and it will direct you to the different options like if you want to investigate or pull rank or if the player is playing as a Klingon player or a Romulan player they can click a, a Romulan or Klingon link in the description of the video the setup video link will also be there and that's find the mission instruction video and the mission instruction video will have like a diagram and such explaining where you put the things on the board and things like that. It's, it's pretty straightforward. Now, unlike the mission cards you get with regular attack wing, your players are going to have varying levels of SP. The squad points are going to be different per player because they can choose any ship and ships vary greatly in their SP value. The way the balancing comes into play is if they choose a more expensive ship, they have to choose a weaker captain, and that's basically how it balances itself out. Now, I'm not going to strictly tell you what cards you need to have the enemies play. So when you are running a mission, you need to create enemy ships, and the mission will have a recommended SP balance, and that balance might be, please make the enemies total SP value half of that of your combined player's SP value. Or it might be, can you please make the enemies the same one-to-one -one SP value as the player's. That might be to offset any mission objectives, like if the mission objective is really hard, then you might want to make the enemies uh, slightly weaker than the players, so it kind of levels itself out. But you can choose to change that to accommodate your own player's needs. Now there's some additional optional rules, these homebrew rules that I've been using. Uh, if you fly off the table, that is considered a mission defeat, but not a ship destruction. So the players can still fly that ship in the next mission. That is an optional rule. You don't need to use it. The other optional rule is torpedoes. To make torpedoes more of a cinematic finishing weapon, what you can do is the player can choose to discard the torpedoes when they attack, and that will convert all their hits into crits. And this ability stacks with other discard abilities. For example, the USS Valiant has an ability where you can discard your torpedo upgrade to get plus one dice. If you choose to do that, you can get the plus one dice and the hit to crit conversion. That's another optional rule, of course. You don't need to play with that. The third optional rule is faxing mixing. 
in terms of mirror universe so federation mirror universe ships you can pretend that they are federation ships you can pretend that like the ISS Enterprise is in fact a federation ship and that's mainly to help people with small collections or just to expand your options finally this rule is not so much an optional as it is a toggle and that is you can choose to make uniques player unique or you can choose to have uniques be team unique so that is to say if it's player unique then player one can run picard nine and player two could run ahab picard they can both have picards but they can't both have two picards so it's as if they're their own team even though they're working together in the game and the other important thing is to keep track of your unique cards used because if a player has their ship blow up then those unique cards are removed from the game for them for the entire campaign and the campaign is seven episodes long that's if they lose picard in the first game they're not going to be able to run any picards for the rest of the game and that i think is generally most of the rules for this uh, the other one is as the GM, you can choose to play and be the GM, so you could technically play this campaign on your own, just don't cheat. And if you have any questions, please refer to the campaign introduction video, because it's a lot longer and it goes into in-depth about things. This is sort of just a condensed summary of the GM rules and guidelines for the game.